Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on data transformation made easy. I'm Kwame, your host. I'm part of the business development team and I'm joined by one of our lead consultants, Cadell Falconer. I'll take a few moments to go over the agenda. In today's session, we're going to look at what is data transformation and why do I need it? We'll also cover integrating data sources and finally transforming data for improved analytics. The webinar will run for approximately 20 minutes and during that time, please feel free to ask any questions you may have in the questions box as we'll get to these at the end. We'd love to hear from you, so don't be shy. Without further delay, I'll hand over to Cadell to take you through what for me is the most exciting and equally most important appointment on my calendar today, data transformation made easy. Thank you very much, Kwame. As Kwame said, my name is Cadell Falconer and I am a consultant with Yellowfin working out of our Sydney office and I'm here to take you through what data transformation is and how it can help you out. So firstly, what is data transformation? Data transformation is the process of taking data, manipulating it, and then pumping, pumping that into a database. Essentially, it's extracting data, transforming data, and loading data back into a database. And with the latest release of Yellowfin 7.4, we're enabling you to do this all inside our analytics platform. But now you say, Cadell, why do I need the ability to transform my data? And there's a whole range of reasons. Let's cover some uh, obvious ones now. You may wish to migrate or blend your data. And that's for things like production stability. You don't want to be running multi-million dollar and multi-million row queries against your database, against your production database, and causing it to slow down or, or impact performance when you have SLAs. And you may, not, uh, you may want to integrate multiple data sources and blend them together uh, to enable reporting over a wider range of data. You may also wish to transform or enrich your data and that could be even to enable reporting in the first place. Again, you may have a particularly troublesome production database that has many links uh, and it's difficult for you to unravel that and you want to transform that into a shape that is easier for you to use. Obviously, you also want to clean your data a bit. You want to remove nulls, white spaces, historic records that you don't want to be included in your reporting. And you can do that here as well. And finally, Another, an easy one would be improving the performance of your reporting. And that could be as simple as taking your data from the production database and pumping it up into something like Redshift. And so now let's have a look at a couple of examples. And the first example we're going to take a look at is integrating data sources. And so in this example, we're going to take a look at pulling data out of a sales CRM combining that data with customer CRM data. We're going to go ahead and clean those records up a bit. And we're actually going to apply a machine learning model that I've prepared uh, to group my customers together so I know who to better target. And then we're going to load that into a data warehouse. And finally, I'm going to show you how we can schedule this so that it's all done seamlessly without you needing to worry about it. And so now I'll go ahead and jump into Yellowfin. For those of you who are familiar with Yellowfin on the call, You'll see I'm on the Browse page where I can find all of my reports, my dashboards, anything that's inside Yellowfin. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and create a new transformation by coming up to the top right, clicking on the orange plus, and choosing to create a new transformation flow. This is going to load me through into the flow builder. And on the top left-hand side of the screen, I have all of the different steps that I can use. I've got my input steps for where I'm going to take my data from. I have my transformation steps for when I want to change what the data looks like and combine it together. And then finally, my output steps. And so to get started, I'm going to go ahead and choose the data that I'm using. I'm going to go ahead and come to extract from single table, and I'm going to take a single table out of one of my databases. So this has provided me with a list of the different databases that I've got connected to Yellowfin, and I'm going to go ahead and choose my sales CRM database. I'm going to go ahead and find my sales table in my database, the table I want to use, and hit submit. You'll see now it'll give me a preview of the data in the table so I can see that it's the right stuff and what I want. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my customer CRM data as well. So I'll drag in that same extract from single table. I'm going to go ahead and choose customer CRM this time rather than the sales CRM. 
and again find the table I want. Hit the submit button. Again, we can see that there's the preview of the data, so I know what I'm working with here. Now for this example, I've gone ahead and just used two single tables from two different databases. But you can see we actually make it very easy for you to pull data from many different sources. You could pull from a CSV on a network drive somewhere. You could extract your data using a freehand SQL query that's very specific, getting you exactly the data you need. Or even pull from a report that you've invested time in compiling together and building, you could use that investment in your time as the source of your data. But for now, we're going to get back to our transformation and we're going to blend these two tables together. So I come to my transformation steps, I'm going to drag in merge. Now I just connect my two tables to my merge step and then configure my merge step on how those tables join. Now the shared field here is the customer ID. So I go ahead and choose that from the list and hit apply. We'll now see the preview shows us both of those two tables of data combined together. The last thing for me to do here is to come to fields and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off one of these customer IDs because it's come in twice uh, as it's in both tables. So simply untick that and you'll see it's been removed from the preview there. And so the next thing I'm going to do in this transformation is I'm going to go ahead and add in a calculated field. Now this calculated field I'm going to use as a unique identifier for all of the invoices so I can find individual rows and I'm also going to use it as the index when I create the table in my data warehouse. So I join the merge step to the calculated field and I go ahead and add a new calculated field. I'm going to call this unique ID. I'm going to select the fields that I want and for this I'm going to simply concatenate my customer ID with the timestamp of when they purchased from me. Choose those from the list and hit save. You'll see now that my calculated field has come in down the bottom right here and I can use that as my index and to uh, improve my reporting performance when I, when I build out my reports at the end. I'm going to add some more transformations here and in fact we're going to filter out the data. Now I'm using a filter transformation step here to drag that in and I'm going to use this to filter my data, but I should point out that it is equally easy to come to your initial steps here and add filters on the data source, on the table that you're using there, and filter from there too. But for now, we'll stick to using the transformation step, and I'm just going to connect that calculated field to my filter. Now I'll go ahead and configure my filter by hitting the Add Filters button. And for this, I'm going to exclude a whole bunch of historic data that I know that we don't need anymore. So I'll go and choose my purchase date, and I'm going to say only show me the last three years of my data. And that's because I know that we change CRM, we change product range, and previous to three years ago, that's not data that I want to include in my new reports. So I'll, I'll exclude that from my transformation by configuring that filter to only show me what I want. At this stage, we have a whole range of other options as well. We can go ahead and start cleaning our data and modifying how it appears by using our inline options here as well. So we can see mail is, uh, is in all capital letters, but I want that to be the correct case. So I can come to the bottom and I can go ahead and choose to switch the case to the proper case. So I choose that from the list. And you'll see that that will change. We can even do things like changing, time, uh, changing numeric values into timestamps. Or we can even do substrings, which I'll show you now. So I'm going to go ahead, come to sign up here, where I only want the first three characters of this field to be output to my database. I'll choose substring and I'll say, just give me three characters. And you can see in the preview, that's already showing that change there. We have a whole range of other things that we could do here. Again, like removing out white spaces and, and more detailed substrings to get the data into the cleanest uh, possible format for me to continue to use. But for now, I'm going to leave it as that, and we're going to take a look at some of the other transformation steps. I'll come up to the top left, choose transformation steps, and you can see I can do things, again, like filtering, or I could start to aggregate my data at this stage to save my load later on when I'm building my reports. I could even run my PMML models. But for now, I'm going to choose H2O, and I'm going to drag that into my flow, and I'm going to run a H2O model that I've trained to group my customers together. 
I'll connect the filter to the H2O step and point the H2O step to my uh, machine learning server. Simply type in the address and hit connect to H2O. Now I've only got one model on my H2O server, so it's the only one from the list. So I go ahead and choose that, and then it just asks me for the inputs for my, uh, my model. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, product for product, gender for gender, and hit save. And again, you'll see that down the bottom, our preview is gonna change, and we've got a new column. We can see that H2O model has come in and grouped my customers for me into four separate groups, so I know who are similar and I know who to target. I'm gonna give it a better name now, and we're gonna call it uh, model output. Now the final step for me to take in this transformation is to output this to a database. So I'll select from my output steps, output to database. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my H2O step to that and choose where I wanna write it. Now it's important to realize at this stage that we're not limiting where you can write to. You can in fact write to any database that uh, Yellowfin currently supports, so that's really anything with a JDBC driver. You can even create your own output steps using our exposed framework for third-party data sources and similar. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my data warehouse, which could be wherever I like, be it Postgres, Redshift, or SQL Server, anything. I'm gonna say, create me a new table. I'm gonna give it a table name, and we're gonna call this my customer and sales combined. Now again, I created that, uh, that unique ID before, so I'll choose that from the list to be my index in the table and hit apply. So my flow is complete now, and if I wanted to, I could come up to the top and schedule this to run whenever I like, but I'll show you that in a moment. So for now, what I'm gonna do is save this transformation and run it manually. So I hit the publish button, I'm gonna call it sales and customer, Choose a folder to save it into, and then hit save. Now again, we've come back to the browse page now, and this is where we can manually execute our transformations. So I'm gonna come up to the top, I'm gonna to right click on my transformation, and I'm gonna select run transformation. And you can see from this pop-up, what it's done is it's pushed it to the background execution queue. This means I can continue to browse Yellowfin, build reports, uh, look at my dashboards, whatever it may be, while this flow is running in the background. I happen to know, however, this flow runs quite quickly and it will be finished by now, so I can check on the status of it by simply right-clicking, coming to Transformation Summary, and viewing the history. I can see each individual step that's run, I can see overall how long it took, and finally, I can see my output to my database of my choosing has uh, output 1,800 rows successfully. So I can see that that transformation has run. So now I'll show you another quick example. I'm gonna come up to the top here, and again, I'm gonna choose transformation flow. Now this time we're gonna use a different source of data. From my input steps, I'm gonna choose extract from third party table. This is extracting data from a third party API. So I'll drag that in and it's gonna now prompt me with all of the different third-party APIs that I may have connected to. I've only connected to Google Analytics here, but you may have connected to Salesforce, SurveyMonkey, Twitter, whatever it may be. And if we don't support it today, you can again use our framework, use our APIs to build your own steps here and implement them in your own systems. I'll hit the submit button and choose the fields that I want from Google Analytics. Now, I only want a few fields, I don't want all of them, so I choose them from the list. And the, the last thing for me to do with the Google Analytics connector is to configure the period of time that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, give me the last one day's worth of data. Now you may say, Cadell, why would I only want one day of Google Analytics data? Now the reason for that is, we're actually gonna configure this transformation to run every 24 hours. So let's say over the period of seven days, you run this transformation, you are going to have stored seven days worth of data onto your local system. But you have, may have more questions. Why, why do I need to store my Google Analytics data locally? Or why do I need to store my Salesforce data locally? 
It could be that maybe you're going to change providers and you want to move to uh, a different platform and you want to store that historic data so you can continue to report on it over time. And if you bring that down locally, it's very easy for you to do that. Now you'll notice I've taken no transformation steps in here and that's because I'm simply going to write this data straight into the database of my choice. So I've put in the output to SQL database. I'm going to go ahead and choose my data warehouse again. And I'm going to ask it to create me a new table if it doesn't already exist. Give the table a name. And now in this case, I'm not going to create an index. I'm just going to leave it as is and hit apply. And so now my transformation is ready for me to schedule. Nice and easy for me to bring down my data onto my local system. Coming to schedule, I can enable the schedule here and I can say run daily at 1 a.m and hit submit. And it really is that easy for me to schedule and create a transformation that's going to look after this data for me and put it where I need it without me having to worry about it. So again, I'm going to give it a name and hit save. Now if I wanted to, we've set that to be scheduled, I could manually run that again by right clicking <clears throat> and choosing run transformation from the list. I'll jump back to the PowerPoint now, and we're going to take a look at another example. We're going to take a look at transforming data for improved analytics, or even to enable analytics in the first place. And so what we're going to do in this example is we're going to change the data structure. We're going to change the table layout. And this may be for things like increasing the speed of your reporting, or even increasing the speed for another system, changing the format of the data so a different system could use it. It's also uh, a key point for improving reporting simplicity. Again, it could be that your data is in a shape that's difficult for your analysts to use, and by putting it in a more logical shape, they're going to be able to produce your reports for you faster. So let's jump back into Yellowfin and see how this works. Now, for this example, I'm going to open a, a transformation that I've already made, my build sales facts. I'm going to go ahead and edit that transformation and talk you through what it does. So as this loads me through into the transformation flow, I'm going to be able to modify it if I wanted to, or change the values and save it, whatever I like here. But let's walk through what this is doing. So in the first step here as my input step, what you can see I've done is I've actually selected a single table. I've then split my stream out into four individual workflows. That is, I've duplicated that table four times so I can change it in four different ways. For my top here, what I'm doing is I'm creating a calculated field that's going to go ahead and work out the invoice total from the, the number of items I've purchased and the unique value, that the unique price that those items were paid for. I'm then going ahead and performing some aggregation here as well and removing a whole bunch of fields that I don't want to create an invoice facts table that only has information about the, the invoicing. In my second stream here, I've gone ahead and removed all the other fields that aren't relevant to customers. And so I'm creating a customer's facts table here as well. The same is true for products. And I've also created an invoiced detailed table as well so that I can get individual line items from my invoicing. So in this example, I've taken one table and split it into four separate tables. However, you may also want to do the opposite. You may have four tables that you want to bring together into one. Or you may want to create your own star schema to improve your, your reporting analytics as well. So you can see how there's a whole range of different possibilities that we can do here. So you can really see how we've delivered a complete end-to-end -end analytics platform and we're making it easier and faster than ever for you to take your data on that full data journey. From a production database that's difficult for you to work on uh, and may, may cause you to take time building your report so you can transform that into the format that you want, blending multiple data sources together, really enabling your analysts and your team, pumping that through in through our metadata layer where you can make it neat and you can change how it looks for your business users, developing reports and combining them together on dashboards. Then your business users can view that, collaborate with each other and make data-driven decisions. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump over and we're going to talk about 
any questions that you may have or anything that may have come up. Hopefully you have a, a neat idea that you've seen from this presentation or you can see where this might suit your business. So Kwame, do we have any questions there? Yes, so we've had a couple come through. The first is from David. How does it know the data has been updated and needs to pull? How does it know? Okay, so currently today, the way the system works, it's based on scheduling and filters. So we're not checking if the data has been updated today. Um, what, what you would need to do is you would build your flow in such a way that it would execute. Maybe you've got filters for timestamps, so it only takes the data that, uh, that was previous to the last run, or you can compare it against other tables as well. Are there any other questions there, Kwame? Yes, a uh, couple more from Tim, the next one. What kind of databases can I connect to? Yeah, okay. Okay, so, um, I mean, for input steps, uh, what we have today is anything that's a database, so any JDBC connector or anything you can add into Yellowfin today, you can use as an input step uh, and read from. You can also read from third-party APIs, as I said, and if we don't have uh, a connector for that API, we do expose our framework to build, uh, build both steps in transformations and connections to those databases. And then as for writing out, you can write to any database that you like, be it Redshift, SQL Server, whatever you like. So okay, yeah, a few more We've coming got through. a couple more. Um, just a moment. Okay, so. Um, we've got a question here. Maybe we might need a bit more information from Raj. How open transformation flow? Could you could you expand on that, Raj, and we'll we'll have a look for you. Can the transformation be set as custom SQL, Adam? So Adam's asked, can the transformation be set as custom SQL? So we use a whole bunch of different things here, Adam. Obviously, we use SQL to insert, and we can also use SQL. Um, to extract here, but the transformation in between is done on the application server. You can write custom SQL as the extract step, um, if that's what you're asking. Hopefully that covers off your question. A few more questions here. Okay, so Mark, um, I'm not sure if you saw it in our presentation, the, the scheduling is is um, is done when you're creating it. I'm, I'd be happy to show you after the presentation, but you can set this to run uh, every X minutes, every X hours, every X days, or on certain times as well. Um, okay, we've got a couple more. Okay, um, just having a read here. Sorry. It looks like that's most of the questions around transformation. If we haven't covered your uh, your questions about data transformation here, we will be in touch after the presentation. For those of you who have some questions that are related to connecting to different data sources or general usage of Yellowfin, we'll also be in touch with those. So I might just pass over to Kwame now. I think we're out of time and I'll yep. let him close up. Thank you, Cadell. Uh, so yeah, our, our details are on the screen now and will be for a little while longer. So if you have any further questions, please reach out to us and we'll definitely get back to you. Thank you again for joining us for today's webinar. Be sure to keep a lookout for our next webinar coming soon, which will be on data science. Until then, thank you and goodbye.